West to Halmin Freon and welcome to yet another video. Tis the time of the week, my dear friends. Oh yes, the review of the Rings of Power, episode 6. And uh, well, I have to tell you that I have uh, heeded some of your advices and I have watched uh, the episode on a 1.5 times speed. And it still wasn't enough. If I tried to watch it uh, even faster, I wouldn't have understood what the people were saying. But uh, what is the most important here is, and this will be uh, the point of this entire video, is that um, this episode is uh, a master of law breaking. Indeed. You know what my favorite song has been for the last couple of weeks, Breaking the Law by Judas Priest. And that I've been always, uh, and it's all, all the time over and over again, and I've been repeating, breaking the law, breaking the law. Well, this is the chiefest example of uh, all the law-breaking elements so far. And, then, and that I thought that Mithril was the worst one. Just wait for this. Now, of course, uh, we've got uh, a couple of things to talk about, uh, but um, the easiest part of this review will be the fact that there's only really one storyline here. Just just one. We are not focusing, thank God, on Harfords, we are not focusing on uh, Elrond or Durin, no, thank you very much indeed. We are only focusing on Adar and Galadriel and the Southlands and it, it is precisely what we have thought it would be. They have come up with um, a completely new fictitious origin of Mordor and this is absolutely heretical. Now, so we begin with uh, the, the orcs led by Ardar uh, attacking the village, right? Or the, the tower where the, the southerners from the southlands have uh, escaped from them. And then, of course, uh, we are preparing for the battle and, uh, you know, the, the villagers, the peasants being led by Arondir and Bronwyn. And there is this very cliched uh, scene and passage um, where the, the people are preparing for the battle and there is this speech when uh, Bronwyn and Erondir are speaking to the villagers, we can do it, we can defeat them, and the sun will rise again. And it really re reminded me of uh, the scene from the, the Magnificent Seven and all the knockoffs, and of course the original Seven Samurai, when there are some saviors of, the, of, uh, of a village that is about to be attacked and ransacked, and uh, the poor villagers who have never seen a weapon in their lives are preparing for battle and they will be fighting with pitchforks and with and with spoons and ladles and it's all very pathetic very funny and very cliche now as far as the law breaking goes at the at the beginning of the episode itself we are we have Galadriel talking with um Stone Resildur and uh, when they are still sailing to Middle Earth with their uh, huge fleet of three ships and then she's talking to Elendil as well and according to the law we're talking actually around we don't know the true fate of Isildur's and Anarion's mother but here we know of course because this is a story that Tolkien never wrote this is absolutely it they have achieved what they wanted to do but it doesn't mean that it go it's going to be good. No, it is uh, absolutely hysterically bad. So uh, according to Amazon, uh, Isildur's mother drowned. And that's it. Fine, good. Uh, let us move on. Now there, is, uh, there are some things uh, that uh, could be considered Amazon's world building. They are, wor they, they are, they are building their own story. They are building their own history and they are building their own world. So, once again, can you imagine the amount of uh, heresy that Amazon is doing to saying that this is something that is based on the works of J.R.R. Tolkien, but at the same time making up their own new world? So the only thing is, is, is just, is just, you know, this is nothing new. We have known it for the longest time. 
that the only reason they have acquired the rights is so because the Lord of the Rings is such a famous franchise. Everybody knows it. There, there, been, uh, there has been 20 years since uh, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings and people are craving for more, of course. Not me. I just want to read the books. But people, the normies, the wide audience and the shills and all the other strange people, the, the skies are strange. The people of the universe are craving for new Lord of the Rings content. So Jeffrey Bezos has taken advantage of it. He's milking that name. Milking that name. And the cow is crying again. Like, no, please. The other is dry, please. So, apparently there are some seeds. A according to the uh, ancient elvish tradition, as Arondir says, they are planting seeds before every battle. Yeah. Fine, okay. So there is this battle between the peasants and the orcs, and uh, thank God I had it on 1.5 speed because there, this was long. Like the, a half of an episode was a battle, but um, you know, when you watch a battle scene, it should be exciting uh, and not cringy. Well, they didn't manage, and apart from that, there, there was another member berry. Now there are there are law breakings and member berries in this episode. So I wouldn't have called it the way the, the episode is called, but I would call it uh, law breaking and member berries. Rings of Power, episode 6. So the first law breaking was, the, was with Isildur's mother. And the first member berry here we've got, ta-da! They have bloody tried to replicate the battle on the Pelennor fields. Because, of course, <clears throat> we get to know that a lot of the uh, the enemy soldiers are really the southerners who have come to the side of Adar. <laughs> and uh, so the villagers and Bronwyn and Arondir, they've realized, that, oh my god, this is so bad, we've been killing our own people. And then uh, the rest of the orcs, just, they, they just come out from the woods. And they start shooting arrows at everybody and Bronwyn gets injured and there's this heartbreaking scene. She almost dies, but she doesn't really because Arondir and Theo save her and la da da da. And then uh, the Numenorians come and they arrive in a very similar manner to uh, the Rohirrim in The Return of the King in the Peter Jackson's trilogy. It was so cringe, it was so apparent, it was so obvious what they were trying to do that I couldn't but stop the bloody video and laugh my bottom off. So they defeat um, the orcs and Ardar is escaping. And let me tell you, if, 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 if I didn't hate everything about this show, just every single aspect of it, every strand, every, every, every corner to the, to the deepest depths, of my heart, if I didn't hate it so much, I would root for Adar. And once again, I'm refusing to use a proper pronunciation of those characters because they've got nothing to do with Professor Tolkien. So Adar takes the bloody blade because Theo reveals the location of the blade because he threatens to kill his mother. Oh my god, this is so original. And uh, so he grabs it, and the Numenorians come, and of course, of course, the commander of the Northern Armies comes. Da, na, 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 na. I am Galadriel! I'm going to smash you all! Gee, I, I'm going to tell you what, I would much rather watch She-Hulk. And I have not watched She-Hulk, and I'm not going to watch She-Hulk. But if I could choose again, if I could go back in time, I would much rather watch She-Hulk and make, uh, make videos about She-Hulk than this piece of donkey manure. So, of course, there's this chase scene in, in the forest, and uh, so she chases him down. And uh, then uh, Sauron comes, I mean, um, Halbrand. So they defeat uh, Ardar together, and we, we, we see that Halbrand has some history with Ardar. Oh my god! So Ardar gets uh, apprehended by Galadriel and she interrogates him and uh, we get to know that, um, do you know who he is? Do, do, do you know? Do you know 
who he is according to Amazon, the dark elf. He's not dark elf at all. He's an orc. Literally a bloody orc. He even calls himself Uruk, which in black speech of Mordor means orc. Now, so he is one of the first orcs that um, were created by Morgoth. And of course, there will be many shells. Of course, there will be many shells who will be saying, Oh, but we don't know what the first orcs look like. They might have looked like some sort of a transition between um, an elf and an orc. Yeah, all right. So they are transitioning. <laughs> Ardor is a transitioning elf. Okay. Fine. Ah, right. <laughs> So we get to know that um, he actually hates Sauron because Sauron uh, was too evil for him. And he, he really is a daddy for his orcs. I'm yawning. I, I am literal, literally bloody yawning during this, <laughs> during this review. This is the impact that the show has on Tolkien fans. It's I am, I am bloody yawning. Uh, so he actually hates Sauron because he loves his orcs and Sauron... Um, uh, is mean to orcs. No, I, I'm I'm not making this up. Adar is in fact one of the first orcs <laughs> who were created by Morgoth. All right, and after the defeat of Morgoth, there was Sauron taking power, and Adar served him for a bit, but then he didn't want to because he was too mean to his uh, orcs. <laughs> You can't make this shit up. You cannot make this shit up. Come on. If it was an original fantasy story by Amazon, if this wasn't Lord of the Rings, if this, if it didn't call itself Lord of the Rings, I would be like, okay, it's like a fantasy show. Fine, good. Now that's something that's vaguely uh, resembling Lord of the Rings. There are some orcs and, and elves. And some little people. <laughs> but otherwise, it's shit. Come on. Oh, my God. Um, so, other member berries. That was, that was awesome. When she, when she was chasing... Uh, when Galadriel was chasing Ardar through the forest, she was uh, whispering to her uh, horse, Nororim, Nororim. Which, of course, was the... Was like... <laughs> a direct, direct ripoff of that scene when uh, Arwen was uh, chased by the Nazgul and she uh, was saying, not only must follow. I mean, the line itself is not that original to Peter Jackson either, but uh, the very scenery that we could, uh, that, that we observed in this bloody episode, you know, being chased in the, in the forest and uh, riding a white horse and whispering Norolim to him by uh, an, an elf woman with a sword in her hand. Now, come on. Come, come on. Come on. Come on. Right. So it seems that uh, they have created Mordor then. I'm not, jo I'm not joking. Because the dagger, the blade, was taken by that, uh, by, by that ugly dude was uh, the follower of Sauron. Or, no, actually, it was given to him by Adar. So Adar gives uh, the ugly dude uh, the dagger and uh, takes uh, a rusty axe uh, instead of it and uh, wraps it in rags. So it's, it's a decoy, right? And he says, like, I've got uh, a task for you, you uh, ugly dude. So while Adar is in, imprisoned by Galadriel, uh, it appears that uh, the ugly guy uh, opens the portal that they were talking about in the previous episode because they said that the blade was a key. To what? To Udun. So actually creating the southern part of Mordor. He, oh, he puts the blade in a keyhole, he turns it, because it's li literally. Li it's not metaphorical, it's not symbolic, it's a fucking key. It's literally a key. So he puts it in a keyhole, he turns the handle, 
and water comes from places and it goes to a volcano <clears throat> and the volcano erupts. So water causes uh, a volcano eruption. Okay, okay. I, 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 I didn't know that if, if you put water in volcano, it would it, it might might be. I don't know. I'm not a geologist, but uh, the truth is that the volcano erupts and starts destroying the land and killing all the people there, and Galadriel gets shrouded in the cloud of dust, and uh, thus Udun is created. An ugly guy create an. A random guy, an ugly, random, random ugly guy creates Udun with a sword. When uh, a transitioning elf who is his daddy is being held prisoner by warrior Galadriel, commander of the Northern Armies. I'm out. I'm bloody out today. I'm bloody out today. I don't care. I'm uploading uploading this video and I'm going to the forest until it gets completely dark and I don't know if I won't or will want to sleep in the forest on the ground because I don't want to see civilization for at least a day. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this pile of shit that I just saw. And that will be all. Thank you very much for watching and I'm Maria.